This video is going to be an ambitious attempt to analyze and kind of classify the Ben Johnson offense with the Detroit Lions were through four weeks of the 2023 season. The Lions are averaging 24 points per game. Uh, some would say they would prefer the, the Lions to score more points. Uh, 24 is still pretty good. Uh, look, let's get a couple things out of the way. The Lions offense is sometimes difficult to define. I kind of look at it as like a shape-changing offense, hence the comparison to Loki, which um, I think is pretty damn good, but a friend of mine makes the graphics, so I can't take credit for it. Um, additionally, Ben Johnson, I would say at times is hard to pin down what he's doing out of a particular formation. He seems to pick and choose which offense to use at certain times, and I wouldn't say that he has two offenses. I would say that he has like five Again, the comparison to Loki, someone who can who can shape change and is neither neither good nor evil, but just wants to sow chaos. He doesn't sow chaos for Lions fans. He sows it for the the defenses and the fan bases of the teams trying to stop the Lions offense. Right now, we have um, 181 play offensive plays sorted in our database. I have also provided a a shared document link for it if you want to. That's in the description. I'll post it up here when the video premieres. I have to give a shout out to uh, Josh, who's helping me label the Lions data. Been an incredible help this week. Just a huge blessing to be able to get this information categorized and organized, and then me act as the conduit trying to bring it to you. So clearly 181 plays out of 263 is not a good percentage, in, in, in my opinion. It's about 68 70%, something like that of all offensive plays run by the Lions have been input into the system. So in the next couple of days, we'll get more completed. But I wanted to bring four points here or make, try to make four points. Um, again, we're, we're missing probably seven possessions from the Seahawks game, something like that. And I think two from late in the game against the Packers. Because I kind of stopped charting there, to be honest with you, when the game was over. Um, it would be no fun to prepare for this offense as a defensive coordinator. My job here uh, is fun because I'm just trying to notice the patterns and then bring them to you. On one, on some level, the database does that for me. It sorts the data, and then I just have to try to interpret it and bring the information to viewers or listeners. Uh, thankfully, I'm not tasked with deciding what to do about it like a defensive coordinator, coordinator is because that would be chaotic. But let's get to some of the data. Uh, you're welcome to follow this along. If you uh, click on the share document, you should be able to open it but not edit it. If you want to save it and use it for your own devices, go right ahead. So we got 181 plays, 84 runs, uh, 97 passes or pass scrambled. An interesting thing to note, this is an offensive analysis, so there will be a little bit of a long lead in here. My apologies. I, I track the Ravens offensive data and the Lions offensive data. There is a heck of a lot more pass scramble instances with the Ravens than there is with the Lions. Well, that makes sense. Lamar Jackson and Jared Goff, two different quarterbacks in terms of their scrambling ability, their athletic ability. And some of those pass scramble plays for the Ravens are called draws, in my opinion. The Lions only have three instances of pass scramble in our database. I'm sure there's more if I had 100% of the plays charted, which we will, you know, hopefully by the weekend. But 47% run, 53% pass or pass scramble. You will hear me flipping through some notes. Um, let's get to the main points I want to try to relay here, then we'll get to the film. For for Ben Johnson's offense, it's not just what plays he's running. it's And it's not just when he chooses to run them. It's how he runs them from a particular formation platform. Um, in the share document that you have, that again is in the description, we're going to start with trap. And Josh and I talked about this at length a couple of nights ago when when we first got together and he started working on labeling the labeling the plays for me, inputting the data, Ben Johnson's not just the trap is a cool concept. All right. If you're looking at this shared document, uh, there's seven instances of it. Okay. We'll show some film now. Long lead in, like I said, you know, forgive me for that. All right. So it's the second tab in the shared document if you want to look at it. Trap is a cool concept. If you're a Lions fan, you've got some familiarity with it because Ben Johnson runs it. There are some teams in the NFL that don't run trap. There's a lot of teams at the high school, college, youth football level that don't run trap at all. We used to classify teams by those who run trap and those do not because we felt like if you didn't run trap, there were certain things that we didn't have to prepare our D tackles for or, or our defensive ends. Anyway, we have seven instances of trap in the database. 
It's not just the down and distance that's interesting to me. It's the time of the game when it's run. So for example, this play here is a third and five from near midfield. They run a trap for three yards, so they don't get it. So you may say, well, it's inconsequential. Why are you analyzing this? It's on the ninth drive. It's on the ninth possession. At this point, NFL defensive ends have been conditioned. Let me get upfield. Let me go rush the passer. Now, when you get to the fifth game, sixth game, eighth game against this Lions team, your, your defensive coordinator, your D-line coach, will have prepared you for that. I'm talking about if you're one of these guys. But then that is a win in and of itself for Ben Johnson because when they're not running trap on third and five on the ninth possession, that slows the pass rush down. I think there's a level of brilliance and manipulation by Ben Johnson by running trap later in games than, than just running it on the first possession. Now, here's one on the fourth possession for eight yards. And you may say, well, coach, this is a fourth possession. possession. It doesn't fit with the narrative that you're, that you're providing us or trying to persuade us about. Well, it is second and goal from the 14. So I would say this is still attempting to take advantage of defensive linemen possibly getting upfield. It does end up being an eight-yard gain. I think the Lions had to settle for a uh, field goal on this drive. Yeah, actually, I know they did because I'll talk about this drive a little bit more at length later in the video. This is going to be a long video. Uh, if you're not looking for this kind of content, please let me know in the comment section. I've, my videos, I've tried to whittle them down to 12 to 15 minutes. Increasingly, they end up being 18, 18 20 minutes. I'm not sure how to make my points <laughs> any more succinctly. Maybe that's a me problem and not a you problem. Beautiful part of this is when they motion Laporta down, he gets this trap wham block on this D tackle. Look at the hole that is developed. Now, would that be developed on a first and 10 where the D line wasn't as focused on maybe getting upfield? Yeah, that's, that's possibly true. I would say this is a smart usage of your personnel, a safe way to get eight yards on a second and goal from the 14. And Jameer Gibbs clearly thinks that he should score. I don't think the average yards per play on these trap concepts is great, to be honest with you. I think, I think I've got 3.74 or something like that. But to be real, though, this is third drive against the Packers, first and goal from the four. To be real, though, three of the instances of trap, and I think I'll show you those here in a minute, are on the 10th possession against the Packers. So late in the game, but starting the fourth quarter, when they went down, ran the football, um, when Montgomery and Gibbs touched the ball a whole bunch of times, and they scored. This is one for a zero-yard gain on a second and two by Gibbs. And the thing, I, it's misblocked. Look, the, the Lions misblocked two of these trap plays on this possession. They'll be the last ones I show you. Feel free to check out the, the um, excuse me, feel free to, to check out the document, the share document. If you're interested in data, uh, that kind of provides you some numbers. And if you download Excel, you can clearly manipulate the data, sort it how you want to. The first tab is done, is sorted by personnel, meaning this is 10th possession again, third and nine. So you're talking about it's it's checking off two of the boxes I talked to you about. It's not just what Ben Johnson is running, trap. It's it's when he's running it, third and nine, and how. Late in the game, when you again, you've been conditioned as a defensive lineman to get up field and um and try to attack the quarterback. And in this case, you hit a seam, you know, ends up being six or seven yards. The DN folds inside there uh, nicely to defeat Laporta. Last one. It's going to be a loss on the play. You guys let me know if you are interested in this type of analysis. If not, then I won't bring this to your attention anymore, but I like to try to figure out what NFL offensive coordinators are calling, when they're calling it, and, and possibly how. All right, let's change gears a little bit. And a couple specific plays I want to talk about. First, I, um, I had to switch my playlist over, so... I think uh, Ben Johnson's one of those guys that can sense when a defense is hurt. And I'll make a, a, another sport comparison, and you let me know if you enjoy it or not. Usually I make basketball comparisons. I spent a lot of time playing basketball for like 25 years. Um, my comparison here, though, is, is combat sports. Ben Johnson seems like a guy who can sense when a defense is hurt, almost like two fighters. You know, and there's thousands of people in the arena. One fighter lands a sneaky punch that – most of us didn't see. Their trainers, the referee, and hopefully the judges saw it land. But the fighter who landed the punch knows it hurt him. And the rest of us don't because we're just, you know, we're uneducated. Uh, at least I am. And we're just watching for enjoyment, trying to catch up with the, uh, the action. 
This is a third and five on the uh, second drive. It's a man defense by the Packers. Laporta is going to win over the middle. It's a brilliant throw by Goff. Maybe this throw could be another foot away from Laporta, but it's a 35-yard gain. I mean, the dude is incredibly talented. Shows his versatility. Why am I bringing this to your attention? Third and five, second possession. Big catch versus man. Puts the Packers on their heels. Very next play is when he chose to go to St. Brown on the snag and go down here at the bottom. Getting the DB to, to jump the little snag. Wheeling out. Touchdown. Now you may say, well, Coach, his play sheet is built by, by what yard line they're on. I, I would agree with that. I would agree. But he also went to it immediately after the 35-yard play. Like I said, like a, like a fighter who's hurt the other guy and knows that the guy's hurt, I'm going to go for it, and I'm going to try to finish him here. That's the comparison I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to make with Ben Johnson is that he seems to be a guy who's going to go try to score, throw to score after he's hurt you, after he's landed a big shot already. And in this case, he had a go-to play that worked brilliantly. I think you've got a zone side up here by the Packers, basically. It's not a great you know, rectangle drawn there, obviously. And then a man side here, down to the bottom side of the screen. So it's a cool concept. Just so you know, it's a mirrored concept, basically, to the top side of the screen. Brock Wright running out into the flats. The, and just same thing as Montgomery down to the bottom. And then the two snag routes here, mirrored concept to the right and to the left. But this is the zone side. And you can see they handle it a whole lot better, basically letting... Uh, the receiver sit down in front of him as opposed to this guy who jumps it, maybe looking for a pick. Really weird play from the standpoint that it's first and 10. Like, why are you jumping that on first and 10? But in any case, planned or designed play that Ben Johnson went to after he had the other guy hurt, after he had the defense on their heels. All right. Rewinding a little bit, third possession against the Falcons. This is a third and eight. Uh, it's a snag wheel with a, basically a pick concept to the top side. I'll run it back here. I mean, it's a beautiful pick. St. Brown's wide open. I think it's like 19 yards. There's also a, a mesh element to this play. I think you get um, St. Brown's in the slot, going to run the wheel, and then you're going to get a designed pick. But there's a mesh element to this too. Watch these other guys for a moment, and then I'll abruptly rewind it to come back here. There's the mesh element, one guy going under, one guy going over the top. So Goff would have that available if this wheel wasn't open. Pull this back. All right, so check out the uh, screen pick wheel. Clearly man gets the matchup he wants. But that defender gets brutally taken out. Beautiful throw by Goff, 19 yards. Why do I bring you this up in the context of the previous two plays I showed you against the Packers? Remember that MMA or boxing analogy? This is two plays later. This is after an eight-yard run, by the way. Uh, actually, this is after an eight-yard run and a penalty. So two plays later, first and 10 from the 45 to go twin wing. And it look, there's multiple things happening here. It looks like a hide concept down to the bottom to uh, Brown, meaning he's from one side of the formation. He's motioned over to the right. He originates from the right side. He's going to go out into the flats. I call it a hide concept. Different people have different names for it. Additionally, there's a, there's a boot element to Goff. Looks like your kind of classic over concept where Goff's going to hit someone on the downside of the screen. Nope. It's a post or a climb route to um, Sam Laporta. Usually you're going to get you know something like this. And that route right there is going to be open, whether it's man or zone, whatever it is. That route is typically open. That's typically the design of it. You can see great design. St. Brown's out in the flats as well. And then Goff is going to flip his hips to throw it back to the other side of the field. I call it a climb route if the ball lands in terms of where it's caught on the other side of the field, on the other side of the midline from where that receiver originated. Another thing to mention about this is that Laporta's lined up at tight end. He's lined up as a tight end running this route. That's somewhat unusual. But going back to my overall point here is that Ben Johnson is attacking you, the defense, once he's already hurt you, once he's already 
snuck in a right hand to get you off balance, to dis discombobulate you a little bit, and then finish you off. That's got to be demoralizing as a defense. Um, I, you know, we have no idea. I have no idea if that's actually what Ben Johnson is doing. I'm not in the Lions meeting rooms, clearly. I'm not in other teams' defensive meeting rooms either. So that will be the only pl only way to know, like, hey, this is a guy who's clearly going up top once he's landed a big play on you, once he's converted a third down. Because the, the, the original one I showed you, the third and five to Laporta against the Packers, was followed by the touchdown. The other one to St. Brown against the Falcons, the, the pick wheel, basically, was on a third and eight. And so he seems to be a guy who wants to go up top, who wants to throw to score after landing a big shot. Last element that I want to talk about, I guess last two elements, is um, when, not just what he's doing, when he's doing it, but how. This is the seventh possession against the Falcons. So third and three. Quick to the line of scrimmage and quick to snap the football. A lot of people do this, okay? Don't get me wrong. This is not something that's systemic to only Ben Johnson, but quick to the line of scrimmage and then quick to snap the football. How does St. Brown get so open in the flats? Well, first of all, he's matched up against a linebacker who still doesn't hasn't touched him. But second of all, they're, Gibbs is breaking out and going to receiver, and St. Brown is staying in the backfield. So they have reversed positions on this play. The running back is at receiver, and the receiver is at running back. Um, again, it's not just important what plays he's calling, when he's calling them, but how. In this case, tempo. Johnson and Goff have a handle on the speed of the snap to remove the defense's ability to adjust to Gibbs being out there at receiver and St. Brown being in the backfield. This is also a way for them to ensure that they've got an extremely favorable matchup. Um, St. Brown just offers you so much as a receiver, as a blocker, and now here, a completely out-leveraged inside linebacker who is threatening a blitz. Poor decision because he can't keep – we would teach our guys, like, you know, St. Brown's foot is somewhere here. If we're going to play man, we're going to have our outside foot. We're going to have our inside foot, a yard off his outside foot. We, it was a dead giveaway. Some of the guys I had at inside linebacker are kind of slow. Hopefully they're not listening to this and they don't hear it. But point was to give them leverage to be able to run with a running back. In this case, it's not a running back. It's St. Brown. And uh, the, the, the linebacker assigned to cover him, look, compare his feet. He's a yard and a half inside. He's totally beat by alignment, and you have the pick concept. So, yeah, great design on the play, what he's running, but also how he's running it in terms of the tempo, refusing to allow the defense to recognize anything and adjust. All right, last thing, and I, I, we're kind of me meandering here. Forgive me if I'm, if I'm not staying, if I'm not being clear about what I'm trying to cover. Um, this last one is, we know the Lions use motion a lot. Again, it's the element of when. So I'm going to make a, a comparison here. We watch the games on TV. Some of you guys may go to the games, right? If you've ever been to a game live, there's always a sense of wonder or anticipation on the, on the first possession. I'm talking about your team, you know, whoever your team is, on offense, your first offensive possession. Uh, really, for me, like I'm thinking high school right now, it's like, are we good enough? Can we block them? You know, I'm talking about as a fan. I'm not talking about as a coach because you know that. You know, on some level, you know that when you show up. But what's the offense going to do? You're in the stands. What's the offense going to do? Will it work? That element, I think, usually wears off second, third possession, somewhere around middle end first quarter, sometimes second quarter. I'm talking about as a fan watching. I'm using this intentionally. Because I think Ben Johnson recreates that anticipation, that anxiety for these guys at different points in time during the game. This is fourth possession against the Falcons. The first four plays of the drive. I'm sorry, this is the second, third, fourth, and fifth play of the drive, I believe. It goes jet motion on every single play. In our database, I only had jet being used, I think, twice before this and then all of a sudden he's going jet four plays in a row and you may say well coach that's not a big you know, element here because when you watch these four plays in a row you got an eight yard gain a 22 yard gain a zero yard gain and then a loss of one it's using specific tactics motion concepts whatever and this is a amazing catch down here by Khalif Raymond I think 
who almost fell and then gets back up as the balance and wherewithal to catch the football along the sideline. 22-yard gain. Ben Johnson, to me, seems to be a guy who will withhold the use of something until later on, in this case, fourth possession, to kind of reveal it to you. Again, my comparison about a fan going and watching the game and sitting there thinking, and I'm, and I'm remembering myself here, watching our high school team play once I had graduated and you know gone away to college and would go back and watch as a fan, are we going to be able to play with this team? What's our offense going to do? Are we go- what are we going to do to put them in conflict? Ben Johnson, I think, recreates that anxiety in the defense two or three or four times a game by bringing in different elements, whatever those elements are. could be motion, could be a formation, it could be tempo. He seems to have a handle on every manner, every method to put defenses in conflict, and it's fun to watch. And I'll be honest with you guys up front, it's a, it's a challenge for me to try to keep up with two different offenses at the same time, the Ravens offense, the Lions offense, and those are the two teams that I'm doing content for. It's actually fun and challenging, forcing me to try to have the concepts accurately labeled in the database and then be able to bring you the patterns as I see them. And again, just been a huge blessing that Josh has been able to help me out. Uh, really appreciate it. So shout out to him. All right, third play in a row, jet motion. I think it's actually a three-yard gain. A return by Raymond off the motion out into the flats. I think that's what Goff is looking for. It gets covered up well, and then he ends up scrambling. I think Bud Dupree kind of gets a a piece of him. Bud Dupree played great, I thought, um, in this game in week three. I thought it was cool to see as a as a Ravens fan. You know, he used to be on the Steelers and is a guy who's been around a little bit in the last two or three years. Suffered some injuries, and he was really disruptive uh, against everyone on the Lions' offensive line and their tight ends. Now, this possession, to be honest with you, doesn't end up resulting in a touchdown. It results in a field goal, like I talked about earlier uh, when I showed a play from this possession. But what I wanted to try to do was highlight or bring, and this is the wham trap play that I showed you already, by the way. I wanted to try to bring to you guys some things that I think Ben Johnson does, not just what plays he calls, when he calls them, but how he calls them in terms of the tempo, the speed. And then when he reveals to the defense that one of his intentions, whatever that intention is, whatever that that tactic is, motion, formations, tempo, uh, player personnel is obviously a big role. It's the same play where you see this huge hole open up and Gibbs get eight yards. He thinks he should score on it. But 27, the safety, who a lot of people said played really poorly this game, uh, he did seem to show up in run defense often. In any case, you guys let me know what you think of the video. If you in, If you enjoyed the graphic, you know, please let me know. Again, a friend of mine makes those. Not me. I'm not that talented. Uh, I think they're amazing. Whenever I ask him, he produces them in about an hour. In any case, look, it's got to be a pain to know defensively that Ben Johnson's calling plays. And as a fan on the other side, a fan base, you know, of teams going against the lines, they may not have awareness of some of the th- these things. Maybe you didn't have awareness of them. To be honest with you, I don't know how, that I would have been this acutely aware of them if I didn't have all the plays in the database or 181 of them in the database and be able to look them up and notice the patterns. Like, for example, the trap. He's not just calling it on second and long or third and five or third and seven. He's calling it late in games when the D-line's been conditioned to go ahead and rush the passer on third and five or rush the passer on second and 14. Uh, these are things that Ben Johnson does consistently. Um, as I as I become aware of patterns, tendencies, or things like this that are interesting, I'll try to bring them to your attention, and you let me know if you enjoy them, number one, and number two, if you'd like to see more of it. Uh, I think I will do a look at his ace formation probably Thursday evening is my guess. Of course, Thursday Night Football kind of gets in the way of people watching content creation, so um, maybe I'll try to get it out earlier. Final time, look, there's a shared document in the uh, link in the description. You're welcome to click on it, download it, use it if you wish. We will update it, and as I do videos like this or, or um, game reaction videos, which I'll try to do for the Lions as much as possible, um, the, the link for the play-by-play or the game notes or the offense data, which is what you're looking at if you've clicked on that link. I'll try to make that available as much as possible. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know if you enjoyed the video in the comment section. First of all, uh, consider commenting on the video once it posts up, once it premieres. That seems to help YouTube content get pushed out to larger audiences. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this content, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this video get more reach.